Well, it's a great day in the kingdom of God, and welcome to uh, Dave Martin Ministries, Living Supernaturally, YouTube Live. Woo! Hallelujah. And uh, this is coming to you live via a recording all the way from southern France. And uh, you'll notice sitting right next to me is a great man of God. Yay! <laughs> Pastor Greg Violi. Pastor Greg's no stranger to most of you. Uh, Pastor Greg has been with us a number of times over the last year and a half. And uh, he's been to Milwaukee twice, did a Father's Heart conference, and he did a, a guaranteed marriage and relationship conference. And by the way, those, uh, those audios just came out this week. And I encourage you, go to the website and check out Guaranteed Relationships, or Guaranteed, no, actually, Guaranteed Success, that's what we call it, Guaranteed Success, I'll get the name of it right, in the Marriage and Relationships Conference. And uh, anyway, I uh, might say more about that before it's over, but make sure you check that out in another conference uh, Pastor Greg did for us in March called The Father's Heart. And we'll probably come back to that and ask Greg to comment on that a little bit. But uh, for those of you that have yet to meet Pastor Greg Violi, Pastor Greg Violi comes via Bielefeld, Germany. Now we're broadcasting live here in southern France. I was hoping to have the beautiful gardens behind us uh, on the video for us tonight, but uh, it was too bright. So instead, we have a beautiful sitting room that we're in and, and the wall behind us, but Greg and I and his wife are, are with some friends of mine from Switzerland here in southern France and for the week. And I'm, brother, I'm looking forward to hanging out with you this whole week. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, for those, those of you that don't know Pastor Greg, I'll, I'll give him a moment to share a little bit. And uh, we're going to have uh, two weeks in a row with Pastor Greg. Uh, we're going to have next Tuesday as well. But I met Pastor Greg the first time a year ago in January and went to his church, uh, invited there. I won't go through that whole story, but Pastor Greg invited me. And I'll tell you what, I experienced love in a new dimension. Almost embarrassing to say this, but in uh, 30 years, 31 years of full-time ministry, first time ever I experienced love at the level that I experienced it. It was phenomenal. I spoke about it for months after I came back uh, from that conference a year ago, January. Then Pastor Greg invited me back last December, and we did another conference. And I'll tell you, if I was to rate the level of the presence of God and, and the dynamic of the emotion, if I can say it that way, the feeling, the experience of love that I had, if I rated it in January, a year and a half ago, and measured it on a 1 to 10, I'd say it was probably a 12, off of the chart. And it just really, really spoke to me. But when I went back there in December, uh, six months, eight months ago, I guess it would be now, nine months ago actually, when I went back there, it increased. I mean, not a little bit of increase. It's like uh, the, the experience in January was a 12, well, now we have that down to a four or five, and we got a new 12. And I'm telling you, it's incredible. It's beyond anything you can imagine to experience. But here's the good news. God is, is moving this work, this movement of God, if you will, uh, through a strategic plan all over the world. And uh, I am so honored to have Pastor Greg Violi with us here and then to have him come twice to America, to Milwaukee, where we do meetings every month. I'm telling you, something is happening in the realm of the Spirit. And, and its foundation is love. But as you're probably going to hear uh, in this interview and then the Fonda Fado, God's giving Pastor Greg some insight into all of this that he's going to share with you. Um, I, I think so anyway. We, we don't have any plans. It's whatever happens, happens, whatever's in his heart. But he's been sharing with me the reality of this exponential increase in what he thinks is the cause of it, at least in part. So all that said, will you give a good warm welcome with me to Pastor Greg Violi? Yeah! I can hear all of you clapping. I can feel it. <laughs> Praise God. Pastor Greg, uh, it really is an honor 
to have you here and to be, to be a friend of yours. And I am so looking forward to this week and just hanging out together as it would be, ministering a little bit. But tell me, share what's on your heart. I mean, you, I, you, know, you heard me say a little bit about what happened there in January and then what happened in December and what's happening now and yeah. it's increasing. Yeah, well, first of all, um, it's great to be with you, David. It's great to be here and just to be together. I'm looking forward to it also. Amen. And so is Marie. Um, you made some real powerful statements after you were there the first time. I mean, amazing statements. And those kind of statements, can, they can tend to scare me. Because scare you? Scare me. Ah, uh, I've been skewering you. <laughs> well, because the Lord's always dealt with me about the danger with success. And so, uh, because of pride. Okay, right. so I had to go to the Lord and I said, Lord, now, it, it, is this true? I mean, this is an incredible statement. Well, I think the Lord said, yeah, it's true. And so now I'm thinking to the Lord, what, what, what is going on? Okay, but to me, it was, it was so normal because when I met the Lord from the very beginning, he said, it's about love. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's about love. And so, I, in the beginning of my ministry, I went to the inner city of Philadelphia to work with the, um, the uh, Christian Drug Rehab Center. And I'll never forget, one of the ex-drug addicts said, Pastor Greg, do you know what we call you here? And <laughs> I said, crazy? I, I, I had no idea what he was going to say. He said, we call you the love pastor. Ooh, that's right. And I thought, well... Is there a hate pastor? I mean, <laughs> you know, so for me, it's like I've, I've spoken thousands of messages and it's always seems to get back to love. So it's been so normal uh, in my Christian walk. When I met the Lord the first time, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I was filled with love and I heard the audible voice of God. And because of my pride, I tell people I lost it. I lost it all. And, and the Lord had to bring it back. But the message of love has been burning in my heart for about 40 years now as a Christian. Mm -hmm. And so, but now I see why the Lord's been working in that area. Uh, in me and then in my wife and then in our family. Because I declare we've had heaven on earth as a family. And we have. And sometimes that offends people. Well, but we've had heaven on earth. Is that, is that scriptural? Um, yeah, I, I never knew it was. I never knew it was. And then one day the Lord showed me, Deuteronomy chapter 11, which says, your days will be as days of heaven on earth. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, Lord. I've been saying this for a long time. So, yeah. And then, then the kingdom of heaven is within you. Now, if it's within us, then we should have heaven on earth. Yeah. On earth. And I believe it's totally scriptural. But uh, I never really saw the, the bigger picture. To me, it was just love one another, walk in love, uh, live love. Okay, but now, after almost 40 years, I'm seeing the bigger picture. Yeah. And I'm seeing that the Lord has done a work in our midst in Germany, and it's not for us. The last time I was in the States, I heard the Lord say towards the end of the, the trip, everywhere I'm sending you, I want to send revival to that place. And, and there was such a presence in each place and, and different people and the pastors were saying our church has changed. So um, God wants to do something so tremendous and as I've been seeking him more and more, I'm getting more and more understanding, the Lord's giving me more and more understanding that it, it has to be centered and consumed by pure love. Mm -hmm. That it, it can't be a secondary thing, it has to be a primary thing. Now, now, when you say thing, what, 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 what is thing? What is what? what? What is the thing? I mean, is that a move of God? Is that... This thing? Is, thing? Yeah, when you say this thing has to be established, what, 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 what do you call a thing? Oh, the, yeah, it, I'm talking about a move of God. Okay. And it, it is a move of God because when... Basically, every person that's coming in from other countries, uh, yourself... Uh, Poland, Russia, America, other people, other leaders, they're being changed. Yes. So whatever is in our midst is changing them. It's changing their ministry. It's changing their life. We've had that from several people now. Uh, and then they all say, 
there's a longing in them. I, I keep hearing that. There's a longing in them. Uh, and I know it's not for us physically. That's part of it. But what they're longing for is what's in our midst. That presence of God and the Father's heart and the Father's pure love. That's what they're longing for. And I'll tell you, once you... You know, I've heard it said, people that go to heaven, they don't want to come back. Yeah. Because the presence there, it's, it's so rich. I'm not, and I had that experience, but the closest I had to heaven was in your church. Yeah. Well, Kevin said, I had been to heaven, and he's one, of the, he's one of the people. He's become a real dear, dear friend of ours, and he says, you're our family now. You know, and he has that longing also. Uh, but he's been to heaven, and he says exactly that. Yes. Um, so now I go back over 40 years of my Christian life and it's all making sense like it never has. Yeah. And, and how our God, first of all, is a father. When you understand that and you come into the revelation of the fatherhood of God, then you see, well, if he's a father, he has a family. Um, and just if I can read a scripture. Absolutely. First Timothy 5. And it's verse 1 and 2. Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brothers, the elder woman as mothers, the younger as sisters, with all purity. Hmm. In those two verses, I think you have a description of what God wants every church to be. It's right here. Older men, fathers. Older women, mothers. Now, if you have a father and a mother, you've got to have a son and a daughter. Or you, or you don't have a father and mother. And then uh, boys, uh, brethren, brothers, girls, sisters, this a family it, with all purity. Oh, that's good. So in the midst of this family, you have fathers, you have mothers, you have sons, you have daughters, you have brothers, you have sisters. We just went on a trip with about six of our young people to England, and the three girls, three guys, and the three girls said, we felt so covered. By the man. And that's part of the love atmosphere. There's a spiritual covering that comes over you. And you feel so safe and so covered. Now, unfortunately, within Christendom, if, if the heart's not being dealt with, there's been too much like young girls feeling like they're being unclothed by a young boy in a Christian church. Now, that, that's too common. It's too real. Uh, but that's the heart that hasn't been cleansed. And I know what that feels like. I, I just, I mean, the Lord's done a work. He had us meet for 50 days. And I've heard many testimonies, and I'm one of them. We were changed after we were there for 50 days. There was a measure of uncleanness that was deep inside of us. Probably that none of us even knew about that the Lord took out, out of us in those 50 days. So now, uh, since you've been there, uh, it's gotten much higher. But it includes an atmosphere that is uh, it's an open heavens, it's a tremendous presence, and there's a purity, and there's a love, and you just come in. And Now, we have visitors all the time, and I look at them, and they don't know what to think. Now, they've been watching live stream week after week for about 100 times. They're just so excited, and you can just see they're so excited. They're here where they have always been on live stream. Now, they're actually here. And they're excited. You can see it in their eyes. But other visitors, they're just coming maybe because they have a friend there whose life was radically changed or they are, they've heard about us or they've heard something negative about us. You know, they're just curious and they're coming and they come into this presence and you can see it over their faces. It's like, uh, uh, they, they don't know what to think. They literally don't know what to think. And then if they won't judge, if they won't criticize, we see it again and again. They're changed. That's that's a real key factor there, not judging. Yeah, it's a key. Judgments will always block us from what God is doing, and that's why the evil one loves for the people of God to judge because that will block what He's doing. You will be outside. The Pharisees, Jesus came into a home one day, and the power of the Lord was present to heal. None of them got anything, right. but it was there. Well, why didn't they? They were judging. They were criticizing. That will always block what God wants to do. Yeah. So right now it's real exciting in our midst. It's exciting to be alive. It's exciting to see God creating a family. A couple of things I want to just touch on. You mentioned that people watch you live stream. 
yeah, all the time. <laughs> How do they do that? Oh, uh, I mean, you're, you're talking people that are not in your church. Right, all over many nations. So how, so how does someone watch you live? Just go online and uh, you can put uh, the Huta David, you can put Greg Violi, Google, and you, our, our church. The, no, uh, Huta David, uh, H-U-T-T-E. H-U-T-T-E and then D-A-V-I-D-S, Huta David's Christian Gemeinde. It's a German name. Or you could put Greg Violi. Sooner or later, it's just going to come right up on Google, who to David, and then you, you see our uh, church screen, and then you're going to see live stream. Now, the, right now, we're actually making some translation in Spanish, Russian, German, but you want the, the normal site, English to German. And so, but if you go on the other site, like Dale did, you're going to hear Russian. So it, it's not going to be <laughs> English and German. So you don't want that site unless you want to speak Russian and hear Russian. <laughs> That's a good way to learn another language, but I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to, down below in the video you're watching right now is uh, some description stuff, and uh, the link will be there. So just, you know, go down now right now, but after you're done watching the video, and uh, you might want to uh, mark, check, you know, uh, click on the link, and then uh, save it as a favorite, and then uh, you can go here to hear you. How often? As often they want. You can watch a service we had five months ago uh, anytime. Because okay. it's called live stream, but you can watch it anytime. And it's as if it's happening right now. So when, when you do a service, though, because I, I know a number of people and our partners watch you live, live. Yeah. So, but, so when it's live, it's really live. <laughs> or you can go a year later and click on live stream and you'll see that service a year ago. Yeah. But you know what I've noticed? And, I, and we had this conversation yesterday. And, and it amazes me how the anointing is preserved yeah. in the recording. Everyone that we talk to says the presence and the anointing comes right off the computer, right into their room. Mm -hmm. And then we've had people say, when they say the prayer at the end of the service, sometimes I will pray corporately, uh, they're instantly healed of delivery. Yeah. You know, 25 years of agoraphobia, 25 years of depression, one prayer, they're completely set free. Yeah, and even though it's recorded, the anointing is there. Yeah, and I encourage people, you can watch them teaching on YouTube, but I really encourage people, go on live stream, watch the whole service, uh, the praise, the worship. Oh my, that, that's an experience. Yeah, um, they, they don't just praise; they praise. And the Lord, <laughs> and the Lord commanded me. I want you to take the atmosphere in the church there that I have created, God, and put it on a CD and start having music CDs. And so when He said that to me, I said, I declared it. I said, We have to do this. And but there was a lot of battle behind that. It it doesn't just happen. And then one day, Thursday night, I I spoke it out to the church. I said. Brothers and sisters, we have got to do this. The Lord wants it. Just like when the Lord told me about a year and a half ago, I want the services on live stream. But this was another command from heaven. I want the music on a CD. And so I made a declaration on Thursday night. On Friday, Papa Jack Taylor and Mama Frida Taylor come from the States, and she's recording all the music, and she stands up and she says, I am going to play this, and I'm going to play it all over the world <laughs> where I am. And so that was confirmation of what I just said the night before. She didn't know I said that. Wow. But anyhow, finally we have our first music CD, and hopefully within a few weeks or a month or so, we'll have the next second and third one. Now, someone, well actually, we, we so much to talk about, but you just had an incredible conference. Mm -hmm. And a couple of our folks uh, from Milwaukee or Wisconsin went to that conference and uh, brought back one of the 200, the first 200 that you made. And I haven't even had a chance to play it yet, uh, the hosts that were with here, Annalise and Gabriel, but uh, uh, they're listening to it right now. But we will have these as soon as you have more of them done. Mm -hmm. They'll be available in our ministry store as, as well as uh, Pastor Greg has authored 10 books, 10. 11 books, 10. 10 books, and all of his books are available in our store as well. And uh, one that just seems to be speaking so powerfully uh, to so many people is the Father's Heart, one of your newer ones. Yeah. So, you know, one, maybe you guys can give a, a little bit of a brief commercial for your book, The Father's Heart. Yeah. But then I want to hear 
Yeah, a little bit, a, a little bit about the conference, but then I want to move back to where we are talking about what's happening in Germany. And by the way, I'm going to be back in Pastor Greg's church uh, for another conference the first week of November. Anyone that might like to uh, join me over there, uh, you know, we can see about uh, helping you with some accommodations. People oftentimes there up in their homes, the visitors. Many, many homes open. And uh, so if you know soon enough, you know, we can maybe arrange housing for you there. Yeah. And I tell you what, there is nothing like spending a week with a family from this church. Uh, but it's going to be the first week of November, uh, starting November 2nd. So if you might want to consider that, I know a couple of people are already got it on their calendar to join us. Uh, but as good as live stream is, or YouTube like you're watching right now, uh, there's a something very, very uniquely different when you're there. And I mean, we've had Pastor Greg now two conferences uh, in, in Milwaukee uh, for Father's Heart Conference and then the Marriage Conference. And the testimonies, I mean, people's lives are so radically, radically changed by the teaching. And the presence was good, but it's different than my, my experiences in Germany. Why, why do you think that is? <laughs> well, it's an atmosphere. Many people come to us from another country and they say, we want to take you back with us, you know, the, the whole church. <laughs> and they're right, you have to take the whole church because it's an atmosphere created by God within the people. So it, it takes time, it, it takes dealings. Those people are, have become a corporate body and the conferences, one reason they're so powerful is because there's so many people at the conference who know how to yield to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. They're not waiting for someone to tell them what to do. If they feel they need to go make things right during praise, they make it right. If they feel they need to go on their face and just start worshiping the Lord and then they start weeping, they're going to do it. They're not going to wait to, for someone to tell them what to do, and especially with praise. Mm -hmm. they, they never wait for somebody to say, okay, let's lift our hands to the Lord. No, 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 no. No, they do that. They, they, they're not, they never have to be told to do that. We won't even do that. It's like it's an atmosphere that has been created by God where you learn to obey the Holy Spirit quickly. Mm -hmm. And so when you have enough people like that, and they're not afraid to cry, you know, one thing I've experienced with the presence, if it's strong enough, the humility in Christ is so great that it, it brings down and dissolves and breaks up the pride in man. Mm -hmm. And so that's many times will come out in tears. They don't even know it, but I don't know why, I'm just crying. And during the praise, people just start crying, and they don't even know it. a lot of times, they don't even know it, but they can't help it. That's the presence. It says um, in Psalm 114, he turns the, the rock into a pool of water. And what does that? It's Psalm 114, it's the presence. Yeah. And so when the presence comes, you, you just start crying. There's nothing like his presence in the world. Yeah. I, uh, we, we had a couple couples from our Milwaukee group go to this conference. And then one couple, uh, uh, Dale and Pam Kretz, actually spent a couple weeks yeah, at them. your home and in your church, radically, radically touched. They shared a little bit about that. And uh, that, that the recording of all of that is going to be on our website, by the way. Uh, once, once a month, they do a meeting in Milwaukee, the second Friday of every month, and then the following Saturday. And uh, Dale and Pam shared about a half hour of their experience uh, in Pastor Greg's home then in, in the two weeks, two and a half weeks in the church and a week at the conference, radically, radically touched. But uh, here's what I believe is going to happen. I'm, I'm going to prophesy over you. Because you're, a, I don't consider myself a prophet. Sid has introduced me, Sid Roth has introduced me as a prophet. And I don't consider myself a prophet. Sid says, yes, you are, you're just a reluctant one. But uh, what I, what, the words I spoke over to you a year ago, January. Yeah. They're, they're kind of coming into a reality. It was true. <laughs> and, uh, and, and here's what's going to happen next. There is going to be a, a, a number that's going to grow very rapidly, home groups. Mm -hmm. It's probably already happening, I'm sure. But I, 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 I sensed it really strong this Saturday. Mm -hmm. And I, I suggested that to Dale and Pam, because actually Dale came back with kind of the idea in his heart already. But I really believe 
that if, if home groups can start to meet on, on Tuesday, Wednesday, not, not taking away from their local church, but they can get a half a dozen, a dozen people to watch a live stream message, mm -hmm. to be part of the, the worship, and then have that kind of interaction. I, I, I believe we can have it. You can have it in your living room. You can have it in your church. And it'll start slow. What do you think about that? I think it's absolutely true. Absolutely. And God put it on our heart as a body in Germany to start having home groups meet in several cities. We have people who actually come to our meeting on Sunday from many, many cities mm -hmm. over Germany. And But we need to reach out. But there's an impartation. The Lord has clearly shown me that He's releasing an impartation of, of the Father Himself uh, and His pure love. And if people would just receive it, just let it come in and let it break down the hardnesses that resist this kind of purity and love, then it's going to flow through them. Yeah. It's, God wants to touch the world. And, and He amen. wants to touch them with His love. Amen. And I've, I've, I've experienced the, the, the touch as it would be when, when Pastor Greg prays. So before we, before we leave today, we're going to have you pray for all those wonderful people watching right yeah, now. Yeah, okay. But, uh, all right, so we're checking the time here. we got about a half hour. Uh, let's hear a little bit about this conference mm -hmm. that you did in, in Germany, and then let's get back to this move of God. Actually, the conference is part of it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. At the conference, uh, it was smaller than what we would have thought. There was about 350 people. The last time we had 70 people. But the Lord said he wanted to touch the nations. So at this conference, we had a group come from Russia, a group come from Poland, a group come from England, a group come from America. Uh, and, and then you had many places in Germany, you had Switzerland, Austria, uh, and, and you had Greece. There was people from many nations. And I believe everyone was changed, mm. uh, like the Lord wanted to do. And our friends, I spoke and Surpresa, or Surprise, Satoli spoke from South Africa. And Surprise and uh, Trefina, his wife, are real special friends of ours. God's making some real deep connections at this hour, and they're very important for this hour also. But so they came, and we were so happy to be together. And he would share, and then I would share, and then he would share, and I would share. And it flowed so well together. Um, it was so, so special. We, I think we were all caught up. And one of the things is, one of our leaders drew a line, two lines, one up front and one in back. And we were thinking, I don't know, I don't know. He drew a line? He, he, no, no, he took tape. Oh, and okay. He, a, a front, across the whole front of the church, he made these two lines with about seven feet in between. And we're thinking, now, what, why is the happening? <laughs> and surprise stands up and he sees the line. And he starts saying, it's like a river. Well, when he spoke that, God literally turned it into a river. And, and then what happened, when people would come into those two lines, they would come under this immersion of God, and people who hardly ever laughed got completely drunk with laughter and joy, and for hours, and uh, <laughs> surprise was one of them, but, you know, but he turned it into a river. And um, it was amazing. And the, the testimonies that came from people who were in the river for hours. Just amazing. I'm going to do the restroom. No, no, the they did that. They did that. <laughs> One brother from Poland dives into it. Now, there's a carpet. And no, no, there wasn't no carpet. It was hard floor. And he <laughs> dove into it. Oh, with the, oh Lord. <laughs> I think it's about five people that dove into the river. <laughs> and then somebody was going, <laughs> just like that. But it, but it was a real river. And... I know when you come into laughter, you could go into the soul and you could go into silliness. And so I'm always kind of alert of that, but it didn't happen. It did not happen. The purity, the joy, the laughter, because God gives us all things to enjoy. And that was so much fun, so much pure joy, so much transformation. It was really amazing. And then the appreciation from the nations and from the people that were there. That's what touched me so deeply. They were so thankful. You know, it's one thing to say, oh, thank you. You know, you're polite. It's another thing when somebody says, thank you, that your heart is deeply touched. And that's what was happening. They were so thankful. Um, it's just amazing 
We, we actually, we gave money for different translations that have been translated into Russian, into Poland. Uh, but the Polish translators, they said no. They would not accept a penny. They were so changed by the presence of God, yeah. they would not allow us to give them a penny. Um, but the testimonies, of, basically the main testimony was simply, I'm changed. I'm changed. And then what has come out of that change, uh, some getting married, now they have a, a love and an ability to relate to people at a level they never did. Uh, people just different. Uh, number one thing, their heart can love at a level they could never love before. Mm -hmm. Marriages that were struggling, some going through divorce, now having extreme love and joy for each other. Some had the healing, some delivered. And then at one point, a brother said, I feel I have to wash uh, the brothers and the, from Russia. Because there's a lot of history between Russia and Germany and what happened about 50, 60 years ago. Have to wash them in the feet? Yeah, wash okay. their feet, the brothers in Russia. And, but then he said, now if you feel you need to wash someone's feet, you can do it. There's like 12 chairs set up. But so he did it for the Russian brothers, but then others, others and many others felt to wash feet. One sister from England, she has a ministry, uh, an orphanage in, England, in uh, Kenya. She was there and she's thinking, uh, no, okay, okay, I, I don't want to be, I don't want to be involved, you know, because she knows how emotional it can get, you know, she's a real precious sister, and so she didn't, didn't want to, uh, uh, but then somebody embraces her, and, and it's just a, such a manifestation of love, and it, 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 I would, it's not easy, if you're not used to this, it is not easy, but once you just submit, like, like, Maybe one or two people in the whole conference, 350 people, did not come in. How do I know? Well, they didn't even come up front, ever. Now maybe they were terrified, I don't know. <laughs> but the majority did, and they were changed. Yeah. It was an amazing conference, surprising his wife and Marie and I. It was such a special time, just to be together. When you're together for five days, and you don't have nothing else to do. You're all there. Something happens, but it even much more happens when you become a part of it and you don't let fear keep you out. Fear is a big factor because mm -hmm. there's no fear in this love. And perfect love, which is this love, cast out fear. So if you don't listen to fear and you just choose to come in, even if there's some fear that you're thinking and feeling, but you just ignore it and you come in, the love is so much greater. Yeah. It will consume you. Yeah, you know, there's probably people watching that have a sense of fear of letting go. I mm -hmm. mean, of, of, of walking in purity. And I'd like you to comment on that too, what that really means. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, I'm sure there's people that are watching or will watch this that have a level of of, of a fear of letting go, being transparent, uh, for fear of being hurt or, or misunderstood. Yeah. Uh, what, what, do you, what do you have to say to that? Yeah, I would say, first of all, that fear is probably related to people that have hurt you, people that have disappointed you, people that have rejected you, people that just didn't care about you as a person. The Lord spoke to me not too long ago. He said he came to heal the broken heart. And that broken heart is one of the biggest problems in humanity. Now, what the Lord said to me after that was very shocking to me. He said the heart starts to break, just a small little crack, when that person could be a baby, could be in the mother's womb. But when that person experiences hatred for the first time, Hatred was never supposed to be a part of this life, ever. It was love. But so when we experience hatred for the first time, the heart starts to break. It could be the smallest little crack, but then, unfortunately, it can go into the hundreds and thousands of times. So your fear is probably related to people that have hurt you in some way. Now, here's a major key. 
the people that brought the fear in. God's way is to let people bring the love in. And this is radical and this is recent. I see the importance of being connected to the body of Christ. And many people that, like I said, they were hurt by people. But now the Father has a plan to heal you by the people. Mm -hmm. And this is where the church must come in now. We must become the family of God. And so don't let that fear related to people keep you away from people. Because there's a, there's a movement in the body going on now that is phenomenal and is filled with love and acceptance. And even in our midst, which is a tremendous manifestation of love in its purity, even there, there's people, they want it and they receive it, but you can still sense they're still fearful of opening too much. Well, no, it's pure love. So my advice to you is you've got to forgive and release the people that were the channel for that fear to come into you, but then you've got to be connected to some people that are not going to hurt you. They are really committed to Christ, and they are committed to walking in His greatest commandment, which is pure love, and they will love you, and then the healing will come, and it will be greater and greater. Praise God. You know, as you are sharing that, what came to me is how many people they, they don't they, they don't know they're hurt mm -hmm. you know they, they don't know what the blockage is they don't know uh, why I can't enter into worship why I can't experience the presence or you know they would say well, they would say Pastor Greg David I I don't have any fear yeah yeah <laughs> but there's things that they don't know that happened at a young age and yeah what would you say to them? Hundreds of times I look at people and as I'm looking into their face, I see their fears. And they will say just what David said, I, I don't have any fear. But I'm looking at their fears. Okay, almost always what I have ex experienced is it's related to a buried memory. Buried memories that are related to pain. And many, many times it has to do with your father and your mother, but mostly your father. There's an experience, like maybe your father was hard and he was controlling and you just did what he said. Now in your mind, maybe you thought it was love. No, no, it was fear. You were afraid not to do what he says, but there wasn't, you did not really have a choice. You just had to do what he said because he could control you and he was, he had such a power in him that he didn't have to say nothing. He just dominated in your home. Now in that situation, there'd be a lot of fear. But maybe then the person's 35 years old or 37 years old and they have believed a lie that they don't have any fear and they know how to function in life on the outside where it just seems like everything's going good. But it's not the truth, it's not the reality. Because deep inside of them, there is a lot of hidden fears. And so they relate to people in such a way that that person is not going to hurt them. You can do that. You can learn, learn behavior where you can learn how to relate people, but it's not in reality. It's not in depth of relationship that God the Father desires. And so I will start with teaching about the Father, like the book, Finding Father, Finding Wholeness. That's why the Lord had me write that book. Uh, and it was him writing it through me. But as people start to see the relationship with their father and all the different elements of growing up as a child, they will, the fear and the pain will start to surface and then suddenly they will realize, oh, this is why I'm blocked here. And this is why I can't do this. And then after we see that, now God's ready to come into that pain and heal the broken heart. And he loves to do that. Wow. No, and this is what you were talking about when we started today, about the family of God. Mm -hmm. First Timothy chapter 5, that's what God's trying to restore right now. Absolutely. But one more thing to comment on. Uh, I've heard many people tell me that they came from a good home and, and love was expressed by performance. Yeah. In other words, 
you know, uh, my mom or my father did, they, they did beat me, they didn't hurt me, I wasn't abused, but they never said I, lo I love you. Yeah. But in, in th this person's, many people's minds, love was expressed to them, you have a home. You know, you, you, you never went hungry. Yeah. You, you know, it provided for you whatever you needed all through life. What do you, what do you, what do you say to that? Uh, this is why I want to teach a seminar from the Bible only about love, about father, about fatherhood, and then they will see that that's not quite the way it is. You see, what they're really saying, probably, is my understanding of love is this. Okay, that's fine. And that's to be understood because you can only relate to something according to how you've experienced it. But now you've got to see what God has to say. And that's pretty clear. And that's real strong. And then that now you've got a choice between man's standard and God's standard. Mm -hmm. And it's so different. And that's when they're going to be faced with a big decision. After they see what God says from his pure word and what they have thought, now they have to decide if it's not in agreement, and most of the time it's not in agreement, now they have to decide, is this tradition to be held on to or am I to let it go and receive the pure seed, word of God? Yeah. That's the choice they have to make. And some will do this and some will do that. The Pharisees, it was all about tradition. And then Jesus had to say to them, um, you make void for the word of God because of your tradition. And that tradition the Lord taught me was the word of man passed down to us through men. But the word of God is the word of God passed down to us through men. Yeah. And we need the word of God because there's such a difference. And when you talk about love, we will consider what I've experienced, love. But now in this move of God, we're learning what real love is, and it's consuming fire. Yeah, it's what I see in, in ministering to people like you all over the world is because people have learned love by performance. In other words, yeah. you know, this is love. You know, you, you, your dad works two or three jobs and you know, sacrifices his life. So you have food, clothing, shelter, and, and opportunity for education. And so what happens is, because that's what they've learned, that's what they bring into their families. Exactly. And what happens is there's a measure of success. There, there, you know, it's, it's like when you write in your book, the difference between a good marriage and a fantastic marriage. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that is bottom line in part of my experience in why and when I was there the first time, it was so unlike anything I've ever seen. And I doubt there's many people that have really experienced the fullness of what's available to us. Yeah. The Lord taught me also that the false self always finds its identity in what it has and what it does. Mm -hmm. But the true self finds its identity and meaning in who it is. So as we learn to live in the true self, abiding in Him, walking in Him, having our being in Him, then He comes through us, and that will always be pure love. Yeah. It's such a difference between those two. But this is part of the warfare that we face all the time. People are convinced their way is the, is the, is the right way. But if that's all you've experienced, how would you know? Yeah. And that's where the church of Jesus Christ in this day must come forward, come forward, Isaiah 62, verse 10, go through, go through the gates. It's time for the church to go through the gates of hell. And then it says, prepare ye the way for the people. Those are the forerunners. And I know that the Lord has a forerunning people now that will go ahead and then they will show the other part of the church. Listen, everyone, this is what a fantastic marriage looks like. Listen, everyone, this is what the body of Christ looks like. Listen, this is what a, 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 a wonderful Christian life is like. This is the way. Those are the forerunners. They're going ahead yeah. and they're preparing the way for the people. Praise God. I'm going to my time. we got about 15 minutes left, so we're good. Uh, you use uh, the word purity. Mm -hmm. 
pure love. Yeah. Can you expound upon that? What, what, and and how, how, how can somebody experience that or learn how to operate in that? 1 Corinthians 13, tell, oh. it tells us what love is. <laughs> and, uh, I, I could have predicted this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 1 Corinthians 13, and this is love. First he says, if you don't have this love, <laughs> you can sell all that you have to feed the poor. It doesn't profit you. You can have the best gift of prophecy. You know all mysteries. You have all knowledge. And add to that all faith. And you're nothing. I mean, you're nothing without this love. So, Lord, help me. Let me know what this love is. And he does. Verse 4, 1 Corinthians 13. Love suffers long. Now, we can't interpret that with the mind. And we say, oh, I better try to be patient. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's not saying that. Love is patient. Oh, well, love is patient. Then you have to ask the question, now, uh, how often? What, what do you mean? How, no, love is patient. It, it's how, you mean, you see the mixture? That's mixture. Love, that's pure love, is patient. Always. This is God's love. See, we interpret love as something we must do. No, the Lord taught me we must be a vessel for Him. And he is love. So when he flows through me, it's patient. So when I'm trying to love, I probably won't be patient. <laughs> the difference is the source. Is it coming from me or is it coming through me? And so love is patient. This is pure love. Love is kind. It's just like a little child. Love is kind. Oh, thank you, Papa. Love is kind. So if I'm not kind, is that love? Is it God's love? No. So pure love is the love of God. It's the love of God. It's patient. It's kind. It never vaunts itself. There's no, look at me, look at me. <laughs> There's just none of that. It's not puffed up. There's no pride. Mm -hmm. it, it does not behave itself unseemly. In other words, if somebody's in a crowd and suddenly you all look at them, it's probably because of drawing attention to themselves. This love never does that. This love heals the sick, raises the dead, and says, no, don't tell nobody. I mean, I always get a giggle out of that. Lord Jesus, I mean, you raise him from the dead, you do a major miracle, and you don't want them to tell nobody. It's like Granny's been dead for three years, now she's alive, but don't tell nobody. I mean, it's, okay, but I understand. It, it never vaunts itself. And then the Lord said, but this is the key to my love. This is the key to pure love. It never seeks its own. This pure love, it, it, you see, if I sell all my possessions to feed the poor, but in my heart I am seeking recognition for what Greg Violi did, it's not pure love. This pure love has absolutely no desire within itself to seek anything for itself. And this is why we must be a vessel for God, who is love. 1 John 4, 12 says, No one has seen God at any time, but if we love one another, we're a vessel for love. Then God is revealed, and his love is fulfilled in us. It can never be fulfilled in itself, because it cannot seek its own. So this pure love has to be this river of fire coming from the heart of God, coming to man and flowing through man. And so pure love is the love of God flowing unhindered through us. A lot easier said than done. Yes. But once we get the revelation <laughs> that I'm only a vessel and it, it is not to come from me, it's to come through me. Yes. It changes everything. So, from a real practical perspective, uh, we're not going to try to be patient. Right. Love is patient. So yes. How, how do I do that? I mean, what, I mean, what Take the word try out. Because love never tries. Love is. And it's time that when the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall be. <laughs> you see, my doing comes out of His existence. What I do comes out of who he is. As he is, so are we. 
What we are comes out of who he is. It's about being. So in the area of love, all God's looking for is somebody that will be a vessel. And this pure love will always flow through an open vessel. It's that simple. So when I tell people, if you're trying to love, that's the proof that you're not loving. If you're trying to love, you're trying to muster, get it out of yourself, what can only come from the Lord himself. He just wants to flow through us. And see, that maybe has taken a couple of years of teaching over and over and over in Germany yeah. at the Tabernacle of David before people, I think, started to get it. And then you just see, oh, my body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. So the love of God is shed abroad in me. But then I just kind of let it go. Okay, so how do you do it? One way, one of the first things the Lord dealt with with me in Germany, give them a kiss. Now, first time I'm in Germany, I don't know anything about Germany, but I have a suspicion. I mean, I've watched Hogan's Heroes. I've watched some of those movies on TV. That's about all we know about Germany, about what we watch on TV, but it's a lot better than that. But anyhow, here I am in Germany. And the German culture, I found out later, they basically don't even shake your hand. And God says, kiss them. Men, women, kiss them. Well, I didn't know about nine years ago, ten years ago, when I first came to Germany, that this was a manifestation of God loving them. It's that simple. If love is going to flow through me as a vessel, I've got to let him use the vessel. Lips, eyes, mouth, hands, feet. Just let him come through his vessel. So how did men react to you in kissing them? Now, I was trying to clarify this. You're not, you're not kissing them on the lips. No, no, not the lips. I, I never get the leading. <laughs> the cheeks. <laughs> cheeks on everyone's cheeks. But uh, I would say shock. Yeah, and then in a matter of a short time, they loved it. They loved it. I, I, the first time I ever experienced a holy kiss was in uh, Uruguay, South America. And it, maybe it's coming out of the culture. I don't know. But this is not a cultural kiss. This is a holy kiss. And, but that's just one little example of hundreds of other examples that we could give. It has to be coming through my vessel, my heart, my mouth, my eyes, when you look at somebody and love is flowing through you, you're going to feel value for that person. That's called honor. Mm -hmm. You're going to feel value. You're going to say, that person has value. Maybe on the outside, the teachers have a horrible time with them. Maybe they're just in deep rebellion on the outside. But when you look at them because of love, you're going to see how much value they have. So, if I'm not going to try to be patient, I'm just trying to be real, real practical now to help everyone here. I'm not going to try to be patient. Mm -hmm. Someone is testing me right now. I mean, someone is giving me reason to not yeah. <laughs> be patient. What should you do? What should I do? So I, I'm thinking, probably guard my heart and guard my tongue and, and, and <laughs> yeah. not say anything. Yeah, but, but still get out of you. It, it's the Lord through you. So I would, this is exactly what I would do. I would choose patience because I choose love. I choose love. I choose patience. It has nothing to do with me, my feelings, or what he's doing. It has nothing to do with my choice. I choose patience because I choose pure love. Once I make that choice, I must take my eyes off of what I must do and let the Lord do it through me and he'll always be patient through me. It's simply, I choose it with all my heart, and then I look to Jesus, expect Jesus to live it through me, and he does. So, you know, it's kind of interesting. I've never really thought about this before, but, uh, you know, in teaching people how to uh, get, a word, get a word from God. Mm -hmm. And so often, God will be there, there'll be an unction there, and it might just be one or two little words. Yeah. But if they could say those one or two words, usually more is going to come right behind it. Exactly. That's exactly how it is with love. Yeah. Just choose love, expect Him to love through you, and it starts to manifest. So it's just purpose to say something loving or, or to... You, it, it, the, the leading will become so clear 
once the choice is firmly made. That's probably the key right there. Uh, it's I, the key. I choose. God knows if we choose. One time I was praying with a man, he had a spirit of hatred in his eyes, and that spirit looked at me for 15 minutes. It would not budge. But then he was cast out, and then the Lord said, I could not help you in your hatred, because you did not hate your hatred. Mm -hmm. And I, immediately I saw in the spirit, if you have hatred coming out of you, and your reaction is not remorse or sorrow, if there's not a, 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 a reaction like, oh no, I don't want that, then it's because you probably like it. And God will, how can two walk together unless they're agreed? There has to be agreement. So when it comes to this pure love, I must be completely committed to pure love. But then I, I must not expect it to come through, from me, but it will always come through me, through the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. of our Lord Jesus Christ, yeah. His presence. Let's check out our time here. I, I'd like you to, uh, we've got, we got to be done in like five minutes. Mm -hmm. And I'd like, you, I'd like you to pray for everybody. Yeah. Before, before we run out of time. But I'd like you to maybe wrap up with any closing thoughts. But I'd also like you to uh, uh, give a, maybe a one minute commercial as it might be to your book. The, you know, the Finding Father, that's such a powerful book. And, I, and also again, I want to just encourage you, there's not a lot of time here to really talk about it. But we'll be back here again next Tuesday. And but this conference that Pastor Greg just did on guaranteed success in marriage and relationships said the testimonies coming from this conference, this teaching, are, are just amazing. We had one couple, and this is, you hear this all the time, but I, I know this couple. I've been kind of counseling them for a year, and they came to the marriage and, and given up, basically, filed divorce papers. And uh, they came in kind of a last resort because I, you know, I really encouraged them to. But they came and they called me a week later, Pastor Greg, and said, thank you. We're, we're having our honeymoon now. Yeah. Been married a year, but right from the, the get-go it was all screwed up. But it really, really made a difference. So, you know, even if it's not a, a marriage that needs help, God will take it to a new level and relationships with, with children and co-workers and people in the church. and So anyway, just really, really encourage you. The, the audio series just came out this last week, so it is available in our store. encourage you to check that out. But uh, a moment here about your book, Closing Thoughts, okay. and then we want to pray. Finding Father, Finding Wholeness, Healing the Heart's Deepest Pain. That's the name of the book. Um, it was written by the Lord to reveal the Father, God, His heart, uh, and the wound of an earthly father's that so many people carry. It's such an important book. And the many testimonies, people have an encounter, supernatural encounter for hours with the Father when they look at the book. When they don't, they don't even read it, they just look at it. One lady kept having an encounter, and then one of the times she lost all desire for sweets. She had no desire for sweets, she says, from the book. But when we come back to letting Father God heal our wound, and so often it's from an earthly father, we will become whole at the deepest level of our being, which is our heart. So I greatly encourage you to, to get that book and to read it. And to, when you say the prayers at the end, the Father told me, make sure they treat it as a real time with me, not as a religious prayer. Say the prayer slowly and let the Father come and minister to you while you're saying the prayer at the end of the book. Um, God is love. And he that abides in love abides in God and God abides in him. So the easiest way to have the manifest presence of God on your life, on your marriage, in your family, is to live in the pure love of God. If you abide in love, God abides in you. It's, it's really that simple. I encourage you to, it, many people come to us and they say, we don't know where to begin. I do know. The Lord has taught me. Begin with your relationship growing up with your father, your mother. See where the hardness came in, the, the, the judgment, the pain. See where that came in and then deal with that. Choose to deal with that through the love of God. Don't deal with it by 
putting it aside and, and uh, acting like it never happened. That doesn't deal with it. That just buries it. Deal with it with the love of God. Mm -hmm. And you will find great results. And a lot of times we find that in seconds and in minutes, in minutes, people are changed. So let's pray. Praise God. Heavenly Father, wonderful, wonderful Father, we just thank you that you're so real. And you are I am. And you have children that all of creation is longing and waiting to see what do they look like? What are they like? The sons of God on earth. Lord, let my brothers and sisters see that right now that you are their father and you want them to arise as sons of God, daughters of God, children of a royal kind, a royal priesthood on earth, no matter where they came from in the natural, in the invisible real world where the kingdom of heaven dwells, they are the children of I am. Lord, bless them. Let your presence come right into that room, that place, wherever they are right now. And encourage them greatly to come back into their calling, to take their place and fulfill their destiny for the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. It's been a great time tonight. Uh, Pastor Greg Viola, Pastor Greg, thank you so very much. And again, down below will be information for you uh, how to uh, connect with Pastor Greg and live stream as well as other parts of uh, Living Supernaturally here. And I uh, appreciate the time you've given to us. And we'll be back here uh, again next Tuesday Night Live with uh, another interview with uh, Pastor Greg Viola. Have yourself a great, glorious week. Good night. God bless. Amen. Bless you.